Hello, this is Jerem, playing Oxygen Not Included, and working on all achievements in this game. In this episode, I'm going to experiment with the research reactor, and that's because I want to increase the speed at which it is going to take me to get the mine the gap achievement, which is taking forever. So I've got a research reactor. I'm spinning some granite all around this room in a conveyor rail, and that's just to distribute the heat. I also have it outside of the base, unlike the last time I ran it. I ran it inside the base to get the, the that's rad. I had to run it for five cycles, but that produced way too much heat. So I've got uh, Red Bull generators around the research reactor, so I plugged that into some power, a centrifuge underneath it, some automation to be able to turn the research reactor on and off, as well as the ability to turn on and off the uh, Red Bull generators. And I can turn half of them on or, or them all on if I want. So that's my setup. How about we turn this on and see, <laughs> see what goes horribly wrong and what I have to do to fix it. So once I turn this machine on, find out it's actually generating a good amount of red bolts and working uh, pretty well, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, but happy about that. And I have to be quick about redirecting some red bolt uh, reflectors so that I can get it to, to charge not only the rockets, but the diamond press that uh, I will badly need for the mine the gap achievement. It doesn't take long to discover the first problem with this setup. If you notice there, I've got a Red Bull joint plate, and that is separating the steam that's in the uh, reactor area with uh, the rest of the space. And that melts <laughs> because it got uh, overheated. It's made of plastic. Anything that's made of plastic will uh, melt at higher temperatures. But it turned into some black Nelf. I have no idea how to pronounce that material. But the point, or the main thing is, that's actually, that material itself is actually uh, creating a barrier for the steam to go out. So this actually isn't a huge problem. All I have to do is build another Red Bolt reflector and it'll be able to direct that out. So first problem, easy fix. Let's hope the rest of the problems, if there's any, will be just as easy. So the Red Bolt reflector literally doesn't even have time to be built before I discover the next problem. And that's because I have steam turbines that are running, and that's fine, it's cooling off, that's producing, or uh, dropping some colder water at uh, 90 degrees down into the research reactor, but that increases the pressure of the steam in there. And once that gets above 200 kilograms, that uh, research reactor can't sweat out more steam, and it's gonna go into meltdown mode, <laughs> which you see here. Th that's not good, <laughs> so I'll have to fix that. I thought I'd reload a previous uh, save and just watch this dramatic moment happen all again and see if I can learn anything from it. So steam temperatures are getting up uh, to 160 or so and uh, and then I've got a meltdown. So I don't know if it's 200, I'm, maybe it's like 200 somewhere around the research reactor. But anyway, you get a high amount of pressure and this thing freaks out. I get a meltdown occurring. So that's not good. It creates a meteor shower type effect. It actually increases the amount of radiation that's being output at the moment, anyways, and destroys a lot of stuff that is around there, including the walls. So it's leaking out steam, uh, breaking some of the stuff that's around it. So I've got lots of water going in there. Problem is I'm sending new water continually in there, and the steam turbines are dropping the uh, recycled water from there. So that's why the steam pressure is going up and up and up to a point you get meltdown. So as I mentioned before, I'll have to deal with that. Now, just before we do that, let's look at the radiation. So this is after meltdown. It's no longer burning the enriched uranium. And uh, it, it's actually a higher amount of radiation than when the research reactor is running, which is kind of interesting. I wonder if I could use this scenario. The thing, only issue is it is slowly decreasing in radiation as time goes on. So I reload it from a previous point because I didn't want to have to deal with this after the uh, meltdown scenario. So what I'm doing in this time is I'm putting a temp or not temperature, a pressure sensor inside this room. And that's going to control whether water is going to be dumped in from the steam turbines uh, to be uh, put on top of the research reactor or go inside the uh, research reactor via the pipe. So that the idea there is that the pressure is low the steam turbines will drop water uh, onto it. Otherwise, it'll actually direct that water to go from the steam turbine 
uh, into the uh, research reactor. In addition to that, I'm going to sneak in an aqua tuner in this room just so that I can keep the uh, water that's sitting on top of the steam turbine cool. So here I'm building a pipe. So I'm going to fill that liquid reservoir with water. And then once that's full, I'll have pipes that go up and down between the uh, aqua tuner and the top of the steam turbines to make sure that uh, those steam turbines stay cool as they're operating. Because the moment that uh, they get above 100 degrees on top of them, they won't operate anymore. One other change that I'm making here is I'm having the dupes only approach the rockets from the top. Basically, I want to avoid them crossing the path of the rad bolts because they're firing so often that the chances of them getting uh, struck by them is increased dramatically. So it's, it's not going to be safe to allow them to cross that path. So destroying ladders around any of those spots uh, where the rad bolt will go by. Alright, so I'm just about to turn water on to go inside the research reactor. That, uh, that will activate it and once that happens we will see how well the system works so this is turned on it's starting to build some red bolts I expect that red bolt to join plate is going to melt again but I hoping that's going to turn into the same material that's going to block it off other than that it seems to be operating pretty good to begin with but the real question is how long will this last uh, long term so I didn't mention this before. I built the part of the wall that's facing the rockets out of graphite. Because I know graphite is a good material for blocking radiation. It has a low melting point. So you can see it here start to melt as the temperature gets above 270-ish uh, degrees. So I'm going to have to replace that with something else. Okay, so here I am going back to just before the point that I uh, turned the research reactor back on. And I'm putting some igneous uh, tiles in the place where I used to have some graphite tiles. It doesn't take long yet again for another problem to crop up. And this time the temperature is going above uh, the temperature which you can safely operate something with steel. Which is what I've made the sweepers and some of the other equipment in there out of. The research reactor is fine. And so is the rebel generators. They're actually not made out of refined metal. So that, that's a really nice thing. But the machine that's going to recharge the uh, research reactor with more re re uranium in the future, uh, that won't be there. So, and so, is the, so will the, eventually that pump that's pumping out some of that nuclear waste, that won't be able to operate long term. Huh. Okay, going to have to think about this. So before I can worry about how to get more enriched uranium into that uh, research reactor in the future, I noticed that the steam temperature, not temperature, the steam pressure is increasing. Currently at 100, so that's fine, but if I get anywhere close to 200 or so, I know that uh, meltdown happens. So here's what I do. I just break one of the tiles at the bottom. That's going to drain the nuclear waste anyways, which I also want because I no longer have a functioning pump to be able to pump it out. And I'm hoping that will uh, slowly reduce st steam so that it sort of maintains some sort of equilibrium. We'll, we'll see what happens. So my goal for this research reactor is not to run long term. I just want to be able to get my mind the gap achieved in this game. So you can see I'm sending rockets up to get some material in an effort to get that. So this research reactor needs to be good enough to be able to operate long enough to be able to do that. So in a future playthrough, I'm going to have a goal of building a research reactor with far more steam turbines than I currently have and operating far more effectively and efficiently long term than this one, but I'm really hoping I don't have to do that in this playthrough. I'm hoping that the, a couple changes can be made to this system to operate and just enough to be able to get the mind the gap achievement. So this missing tile underneath the uh, centrifuge there seems to be helping, but the temperature or temperature the pressure is still going up slowly. So I may have to do something else. Now the good thing is the uh, temperature, oh, I keep seeing temperature, the pressure keeps going up slowly enough that eventually the research reactor ran out of fuel. 
So as I mentioned before, the automated process to recharge that or add more fuel to enriched uranium is not there. So I'm going to build a system to deal with the pressure increase and allow my dupes to go in and add more enriched uranium for that to continue to operate. So here's the change I made. I made a wall along the bottom of this system with the two doors, one that's going to be eventually uh, blocking the steam that comes out with the switch to be able to turn it on and off so I can release more uh, pressure when I need to. It also allows my dupes to be able to go up and add some more fuel to this. So I'm going to get them to build a ladder up there. Now, while that research reactor is off, the radiation, oh, the scientist is sleeping, or narcoleptic. Um, <laughs> anyway, once uh, they're up there, the, they're not going to have, uh, they're not going to be exposed to radiation. And, and of course, until the moment that uh, research reactor turns on. So the idea is they're going to have to run like hell once that the machine goes on and I'm going to uh, block them, block that door at the bottom so they can't go back in until, of course, the next time it needs to be recharged. All right, so I removed the aqua tuner because that's adding heat to this system. And the research reactor, yes, it's outputting hot steam, but that steam seems to max at about a temperature of 300 or so degrees, enough to break anything made out of steel. But the research reactor and rebel generators are continuing to operate. So I also had to turn off the uh, steam turbines because they, they were going to get above 100 degrees anyways and stop, uh, stop operating. Okay, so another meltdown. What happened this time? Uh, this time it was water not being able to be provided into the research reactor. So you get a meltdown in two cases. One, if the pressure is too high, I think it's 200 uh, kilograms, it can't sweat out and it'll have a meltdown. The other thing is if it doesn't have water, if it needs water and you're not providing water in the pipes, it melts down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a series of liquid reservoirs so that I always have a cache of water to be able to go in this thing. Because what I believe was happening is one of the rockets would land and that would start to uh, get you know, water into it because each rocket um, has pipe, water pipes. That would direct the water towards the rocket instead of the research reactor and ultimately causing a meltdown. So with these liquid reservoirs, that will hopefully prevent that from happening. So this system is working much better. I'm really hoping that I have enough water overall in my base to be able to keep this operating. I can, uh, because one of the things you can't do, you can't turn the research reactor off. When you turn it off, all you're really doing is stopping any new fuel from going into it. The fuel that is in there has to burn out before uh, it, it turns off and stops being in a risk of meltdown. So because of that, I really need to make sure I have enough water to always input into this until it, uh, it turns down. Now, as I mentioned before, this uh, system of bleeding out the steam is completely wasteful. So I wouldn't want to do this another playthrough, but I'm really hoping it's just good enough to get this friggin' Mind the Gap achievement, which is, I think, the worst, <laughs> worst achievement to try to get in this game. So I didn't put any automation on the door that lets out some of the steam when it becomes overpressured in the research reactor. So as good as my intentions may be to always keep an eye on that and open it when it's needed, it's going to melt down, as you can see here, when I forget at some point. I'll have to go back and reload to a previous spot. So apart from occasionally forgetting to let out some steam, so here I've gone back to a previous stage uh, before the meltdown to let out some steam, Everything seems to be running pretty good. I'm able to charge the Red Bull generators for rockets really quickly. And any of the excess uh, Red Bolts gets directed towards Diamond Press, which I also need for mining. So this system is working really good. It's just a matter of can I operate it long enough to be able to get uh, my Mind the Gap achievement, which I've been working on forever. Whenever possible, when I go out to a mining mission, I go to the closest field as possible. I don't care what material they bring back, I just want the freaking achievement. In order to make this system run long enough while my dupes go out and uh, mine some material in different spots, I've had to start pumping water from various different reserves in my base that I wasn't using. But apart from that, 
I'm pretty sure I've got enough water to be able to uh, get this achievement and keep keep uh, running that research reactor to recharge the rockets and keep continually produce enough diamond for uh, for the mining that they need to do. This is the moment I have been waiting for for a very long time. I just need a little bit more mining in order to get the mine the gap achievement in this game. So this is the last rocket I, I'm predicting I'm going to need in order to do that. They are getting very low on diamonds, but uh, let's just hope that I'll be able to get this run. Otherwise, I'll need to send another rocket up. So I'm in the grams now of diamond. There it is. I just had about 2,000 grams of diamond left, but the mine the gap achievement is mine. Whew. This took forever and a lot of experimenting with the research reactor. So I'm going to have more to say about this on the final episode, but I'm just going to leave it at that for now. I just have two achievements left. That is the No Place Like Clone and The Great Escape. So I'll either have one or two episodes more, and I hope to see you in one of those.